conducting training in the field of data science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning since past many years. Uh, and I've delivered training for many of many corporate institutions, including Walmart, Deloitte, LTI Mindtree, and many more. All right, so that was just a brief introduction about me. Now let's start off. So guys, what is our goal for today? Let's understand our goal. So our goal for today is to understand the various AI services that Azure offers. Now there are many, many AI services that Azure offers. We'll be talking about three search services. So the first service that we'll be talking about is how we can convert speech from one language to another. So let's say I want to convert speech from English language to Hindi language. I want to convert speech from Hindi language to Marathi language. OK, so I can convert speech from. Uh, one language to any other language that I want. All right, so that is what we'll be doing today. We'll be going ahead and writing code in Python programming language for the same using Azure platform. Now the prerequisite for all the labs that we'll be doing today is that you need. A average understanding of Python programming language. In order to understand the syntaxes better, but if you don't have knowledge of Python programming language, that's not an issue. You will still understand the flow of code that we are writing. Is this that maybe the syntax you might not understand, but still you will understand the flow of code that we are writing. All right, so the first lab that we'll be doing today is we'll be learning about how we can convert speech from one language to another. And we'll be going ahead and we'll be writing our code in Python programming language for the same using Azure platform. Then the second lab that we'll be do doing today is we'll be learning how to translate text from one language to another. We'll be learning about how to translate text from one language to another. First lab was how to translate speech from one language to another, whereas second lab will talk about how to translate text from one lab to another. Sorry, from one language to another. Then moving on to our third and last lab that we'll be doing today. In our third and last lab, we'll be learning about how to analyze text. OK, so by analysis, we can do many, many things. Uh, we can go ahead and understand the sentiment behind the written text. We can go ahead and do entity recognition. By entity, I mean any person, object, place mentioned in the text. If I want to recognize what are all the entities mentioned in the text, I can go ahead and do that. That comes under analysis as well. Like that, there are a lot of things we can do under analysis. So we'll be doing some analysis of a given text. And so basically, we'll be doing these three labs. In order to do these three labs, we'll be writing our code in Python programming language using the Azure platform. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's start with our first lab. In our first lab, what we'll be doing is we'll be translating text. Oh, sorry, my mistake. In our first lab, what we'll be doing is we'll be translating speech from one language to another. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's translate speech from one language to another. How to do it? Let's see. In order to do it, you will need a AI service in Azure. OK, if you want to translate speech from one language to another, you will need a AI service within Azure. So let's go ahead and let's look into the different AI services that Azure offers. So over here in the search bar, I will try to search for Azure AI services. You can see the result is shown to me over here. And I'll just click the first option in the result. Let me go ahead and do that. And on the left hand side, you can see various AI services that Azure offers. OK, so Azure offers you. The capability to use uh, open AI models. OK, so there are many open AI models. Chat GPT is just one of the open AI models. There are many other open AI models. All of those open AI models you will be able to access over here. Then uh, there are many others also. For example, if you want to translate speech from one language to another, you will use the speech service. If you want to translate text from one language to another, you will use the translator service. OK, 
then let's say you want to analyze a document, whether it's a PDF document, a Word document, any document. If you want to analyze a document, in that case, you will use this document intelligence service. OK, like that, there are many services that are available. Fine. Uh, however, in this lecture, we'll only be focusing on three services. First will be speech service that will be used by us to translate speech from one language to another. Then second is translator service, which will be used by us to translate text from one language to another. And then third will be language service, which will be used by us to analyze the language given in the text. OK, so by analyzing language, I mean understanding the sentiment behind the text, um, doing entity recognition on the text and so on and so forth. Fine. So in our lecture, only these three services will be used. All right. So let's start with our first service speech service. As we know, this service is used to translate speech from one language to another. So let's go ahead and let's use it. So I'll click on that option. And here it will give me. A window on which it will show to me all the existing speech services that I have created. Currently, I have not created any speech service whatsoever whatsoever or in other words, I have not used the uh, I, mean, you, I have not used speech service whatsoever up till now. Fine. So currently it is empty. OK, fine. So let's go ahead and guys remember in Azure whenever you want to use any service of Azure, you have to use it as a resource. I repeat whenever you want to use any service of Azure, you have to use it as a resource. So let's say I want to use the speech service. I will have to create a speech resource for the same. So let's create a speech resource for the same. I'll go ahead and click on this create button and it will create a speech resource. OK, let me click on the create button. When I do that, I am redirected to a form that I have to fill. Now the first field in the form over here is asking me to select subscription. Now, as many of you might know, that in one Azure account, you can have many subscriptions. For example, over here, my MSDN subscription has around 8000 rupees of credit. Uh, some other subscription would have different uh, credit in them. In Azure, you also have a capability to give subscription to your friends. So for example, these two subscriptions were gifted to me by someone else, right? And in each of those subscriptions, when at the time when they were gifted to me, there were hundred dollars of credits. It's just that I have extinguished those credits. OK, so currently those subscriptions have been disabled for me. OK, I have extinguished those credits. So those subscriptions have been disabled for me. So only one subscription is uh, enabled in my scenario. However, in your scenario, you can have more than one subscriptions enabled also. OK. Fine. So over here, this subscription is enabled called MSDN. So I will use that one. So you have to choose the subscription from which you want your cost to get deducted. Now, any service you will use in Azure will have some cost associated to it. OK, so that cost will be deducted from which subscription that you have to decide. Let's say your first subscription has $100 of credit. Your second subscription has $50 of credit. You want that cost should be deducted from the second subscription. So you can go ahead and choose the second subscription up to you. OK, so you have to choose the subscription from which you want the cost to get deducted. Fine. The next field in the form is called resource group. Now over here we are creating a resource for the speech service. So any resource in Azure will have to fall within some or the other resource group. I repeat any resource that we are. Trying to use in Azure will have to fall within some of the other resource group. Now, what are the benefits? Let's see. Uh, why to put resources inside of a resource group? Let's try to understand. Now let's take a scenario, guys, wherein you are trying to build a project. And for that project, you have created 20 resources. Let's say one resource is speech. Resource, another resource is SQL resource on Azure. And like that, you have created many, many resources. OK, let's say you have created in total 20 resources. Now let's say those 20 resources are not there inside any resource group. Then what will happen? Let's understand. 
I repeat, let's say you have created 20 resources for your project on Azure and those 20 resources are not there inside any resource group. What will happen? Now let's uh, take a scenario wherein the project has expired now. OK, that project has closed. So now this project is of no use for you. If the project is of no use, then the resources within the project will also be of no use. So will you go inside each resource one by one and then delete the resource that OK, let's go inside first resource, delete that resource. Let's go inside second resource, delete that resource like that. If you go to 20 resources individually, it could be very tedious for you, right? So instead of doing that, what we do is why don't we put these resources inside one resource group only? We'll put these resources inside one resource group only. And let's say now I don't want these 20 resources to exist. What I can do is instead of manually deleting them or instead of individually deleting them one by one, what I can do is I can directly delete the entire resource group itself. With that, all the resources within the resource group will automatically get deleted. OK, that is a more efficient approach. So basically resource group helps you to manage the resource be resources better. OK, so one of the use case of management is life cycle management. So resources that have the same life cycle should fall within the same resource group. For example, let's say you have created two resources. Those two resources you want to delete. On the same time. OK, let's say those two resources are related to one another. Let's say I will create some resources today for our webinar. Now the, res now the resources that I will create today, I want to make sure that in the evening I, I will delete them just so that I am not, uh, you know, incurring cost on the same. So what will I do since these resources that I will create today in the webinar have the same life cycle, right? They will not be of use. Uh, after afternoon, right? So what I will do is those resources, I will make sure that they are in the same resource. OK, so one use case of. Uh, resource group is life cycle management. OK, there are other use cases also. So let's say uh, you have created 20 resources for your project and now you want to calculate total cost of your project. So will you go inside each resource one by one and see the cost incurred? For example, you can go to your first resource and see that, OK, your $10 of uh, cost was incurred in the first resource. In the second resource, let's say $15 cost was incurred and so on. Like that, will you go inside 20 resources and see the cost incurred individually? OK, and then at the end, you will have to take the sum of all the cost incurred. That will be very tedious for you. Instead, what you do is you put these 20 resources inside one resource group. OK, and then within the resource group, you will be able to see the cumulative cost for all the resources in that resource group. So you don't have to calculate the cost of every resource individually. What you can do is you can go to the resource group in which those resources lie and you can get the cumulative cost just by a single click of the button. OK, so basically a resource group helps you for efficient management of resources. OK. Of resource group helps you for efficient management of resources. Now Sanjeev has a question over here. Sanjeev says how many resource groups can we create? You can create unlimited resource groups in Azure. You can create 1000 resource groups, 1 lakh resource groups, any number that you want. There is no upper limit on how many resource groups you have. Uh, you are allowed to create in Azure. You can create as many resource groups as you want. Now Sanjeev also has a question that within that resource group, how many resources we can have within that resource group? You can have as many resources as you want within the same resource group. You can have 20 resources. You can have 2000 resources. You can have 20,000 resources, any number of resources that you want. OK, so there is no upper limit. So there is no upper limit, Sanjeev. As far as number of resource groups are concerned, you can create as many resource groups as you want. And within the resource group, uh, how many resources you can create? Well, again, you can create unlimited number of resources. That's up to you. Yes, welcome Sanjeev. All right, so let's go ahead. So as we know, uh, resource group helps for better management of resources. So you can make sure that this resource that we are creating right now, OK, uh, we are creating a resource for the speed service. That resource, we want it to fall within some resource group. So you can select an existing resource group in which you want your resource to fall into 
or you can create a new one as well. Let us go ahead and let's create a new one. What we will say is we'll say that our resource group is called webinar RG. Webinar RG. All right. So this is the name of the resource group that we have given. Now the next field in the form is asking us to select region. Okay. Uh, so remember guys that the region that you select over here should be closest to your user. Let's say you are making this resource for some customer who is in the US. Then the region that you select over here should be closer to US just for better latency. Okay, just for better latency. See, if the region is far away from the user, then it will take time of whatever information is being uh, you know, sent from the resource to the customer will take time to reach the customer. Although the latency is very less around 0 0.2 seconds, 0 0.3 seconds or so, but still there is some latency out there. OK, so make sure that whatever region you choose is closest to the customer for which for whom you are making this resource. OK, here I'll select the default region only. However, if you want to change it, you can. You can see there are many options available. Let's say you are creating a resource for a user in India. You will select a region in India. OK, and so on. Fine. Then after that, it is asking us to give a name to this resource. So let's go ahead and let's give it a name. We'll give it a name saying translate text. OK, after that, uh, before I move ahead, here it is giving me an error saying that this name has already been used by someone. So let us give a different name to this resource. So I'll give a different name. I will say translate text S Y N. OK, let's see if this name has been used. No, it has not been used. It is a unique name. So this name is a valid name over here. Fine. After that, the last field in this form over here is asking us to choose the pricing tier. So let's go ahead and let's choose it. Your guys, I only see one option, but in your accounts, you will see two options. One will be the free pricing tier. It's just that your free pricing tier is not shown to me. Why? Because I have exhausted the free pricing tier limit a long back. OK, so that's why that free pricing tier option is not shown to me. So remember, there is a free pricing tier also. If you choose that, you won't be deducted any cost. OK, no cost will be deducted from your subscription. However, uh, there's a limit to how much uh, you can use for free. I've already exhausted that limit. That's why that free pricing tier is not shown to me. Fine, so I'll choose the standard one. All right, after that, the rest of the details, I'll keep it default. Uh, the networking details, identity details, tag related details, I'll keep it default. You might wonder what are tags. Tags are nothing but sticky notes that you assign to your resource. So just like for a cloth, we have a tag, right? It helps us to better identify that cloth. So let's say there are lots of clothes in a shop. If you have a tag on that cloth, it helps you to identify the cloth weather. That's that's all. Just like that, let's say I've created a lot of resources in my subscription. Now I want to search for that resource. OK, so I can uh, make sure that first I assign a tag to that resource. With that tag, if I try to search for that resource, I'll be able to search for it in a better manner. That's all. However, over here, I don't want to assign any tags. Fine, so all the details, I want to keep it default. The network details, identity details, tag related details, I'll keep it default. I directly want to jump to the review plus create section. So let me go ahead and let me click on this button. It will directly jump to review plus create section. Fine, so let's do that. And it will validate all the details that were entered by us. It will give us one last chance to review all the details. If we are fine with the details, we'll just go ahead and ask Azure to create this resource for us. So here we are creating a resource to use the speed service. OK, what is the intention behind creating the resource? We are trying to create the resource so that we can translate speech from one language to another. OK, so let us wait for this resource to get created. It will take around 30 seconds or so. And within 30 seconds, the resource should get created. And here you can see the resource has been created for me. All right, let me go to the resource now. Fine. So one part of our lab is done. We had to create a resource for the speed service. 
and we have done that. All right. Now let's go ahead and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll write code for the same. Let's go ahead and let's write code to use the resource that we just created on Azure. So let's go ahead and let's write code for the same. I will write code in a software called Visual Studio Code. OK, you can write code in any software. However, I prefer this software called Visual Studio Code. Fine. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do our first lab in which we'll be trying to translate speech. So let me give a name to this coding file saying that I will be translating. Speech, OK, and that coding file will be a Python coding file. All right, now let's go ahead. So uh, the first thing that I will do is I will go ahead and uh, mention the key to access the resource that we created on Azure. OK, so in Azure, we created a resource. This resource we created just two, two minutes back. Let's go ahead and let's get the key. Only if you have the key, only then you can get access to this resource. OK, and you can see how the keys look like. There are two keys given. You can use any one of them. OK, just like in our house, we have two keys, right? That if let's say one gets corrupted, you can use the other one, right? So here there are two keys given to you. One is for backup. You can use any one out of these two keys up to you. OK, let us use the first one. You can use the second one also. That's absolutely fine. Fine. So I'll take the key value or I should say I'll take the key and uh, save it in my coding file. OK. So let me go ahead and let me save my key in my coding file. All right. Now, with this key, I will gain access to the resource. But how will my coding file know which resource I want to gain access to? So I need the link or I need the endpoint to access the resource. OK, endpoint is nothing but the link to that particular resource. So let's go ahead and uh, let's save this link or let's save this endpoint to access this particular resource. All right, fine. Now let's go ahead. What I will do is uh, I will go ahead and pass these values to the Azure portal. OK, see these values need to be passed to the Azure portal. So Azure portal can figure out that OK inside Azure, which resource do you need access to? And uh, uh, what is the key to access the resource? Do you have the correct key or not? That has to be passed to Azure. In order to do that, I will need help of a Python class. So let me go ahead and let me import that class over here. Let me go ahead and let me import that class. Here I'll just go ahead, call it, and these details I'll just go ahead and pass. Okay. So first I'll pass the key okay, uh, to the to my Azure portal. Fine. And once I pass it, I will just go ahead and save the progress in a variable. All right, fine. The next thing that I will do is after gaining uh, after passing the key, I need to mention that exactly which resource do I want to gain access to with this key? So over here, let's go ahead and let's mention that. For that, I will need a second class for which I will import that second class. The name of that class is text analytics client. OK, what that class will do? I'll just go ahead and I will show that to you. What that class will do? It will go ahead and it will pass this key to your resource that you want in Azure. OK, it will go ahead and pass the key to the resource that you want in Azure. Fine. So let's go ahead and let's do it. So in fact, I don't I will not need text analytics. I'm translating speech, right? So why would I need uh, text analytics? My mistake. I would uh, I will have to change our code over here. Uh, my mistake here. I'm not doing analysis on text. I'm doing speech translation, so I will have to use slightly different code. Fine, not an issue. Uh, let's go ahead. OK, uh, in order to do tree speech translation up till now, what I have done, I have saved the key of my resource and uh, that key will gain will allow me access to that resource that I've created in Azure. I have also saved the link to that particular resource in Azure. OK, 
Apart from that, one more thing I will need to store over here, which is the region in which I have created that resource. So I've created that resource in East US region. So I will go ahead and I will mention the same. OK, let's go ahead and let's mention the same over here. One second, I'll just go ahead and mention the same. So let's go ahead. Let's mention the same. I'll just say that the region in which you have created the resources east us fine all right so these three things we have saved fine let's see what to do with these three things now let's go ahead so first what i will do is these credentials that i have just saved i will just go ahead and i will pass it to the azure portal okay and to the azure portal i want to let it know that i want to access the speech resource okay so in order to access the speech resource, I will have to use a class. So let me go ahead and let me import it. So I'll just go ahead and I will import that class over here. Let me go ahead and let me import it. So slowly and steadily, we'll just go ahead and import. OK, after importing, I will call it. And to this class, I'll just go ahead and I will pass the credentials. So I will say to Azure, that OK, I want to access your speech resource, but in order to access the speech resource, right? I will need to pass some credentials, so let's go ahead and let's pass it. OK, first of all, I'll write the full code. I will say that using the speech resource, I want to do translation and uh, let me just go ahead and give the configuration settings in order to do translation. So I will just go ahead and mention the configuration settings. OK, here I need to do two things. First, I need to pass the key to that resource, but there are many resources that you might have in Azure. So which particular resource do we want to access? We have saved the link of that resource also. That link or that endpoint I will pass over here. Fine. With this, we'll gain access to that resource. So let me go ahead and let me save the progress over here in a variable. Fine. After that, I will just go ahead and mention other details. So I want to do translation from one language to another, right? So my what I want to do is my input language. I want to keep it same. OK, my input language. I want to keep it same. Uh, let's say it will be English only throughout. So I will speak something in English language, but my output language. I want it to be different. So my output language could be anything. It could be French. It could be, let's say, Spanish. It could be Hindi. OK, so I want to allow three output languages. You can allow any number of output languages. There are a lot of languages that are supported in Azure. I want to allow only three output languages. OK, so one input language and three output languages. Fine, so let me go ahead and let me specify that. So I'll just go ahead and say that the speech input that I'll be giving OK, will be in English language. So I will say to Azure that the speech that I will be giving to you. OK, will be in English language. OK, so let me go ahead and let me mention that that it will be in English language. All right, so my input will be in English language, but what about my output? So let me go ahead and let, let me mention details about that. OK, so I will say that my output language could be one out of the three. OK, I will say that my output language could be one out of the three. Either my output language could be French. Or my output language could be uh, Spanish. Or my output language could be Hindi. OK, so these are the codes for those languages. For example, HI is the code for Hindi language. ES is the code for Spanish language. So you have to go to uh, documentation of uh, Azure and see that for different languages, what is the code? And you have to mention that particular code only. OK, fine. All right, so I've mentioned that my input language will be one language US, but my output language could be any one out of these three. All right, after that, I will just go ahead and ask the user that are you ready to translate? OK, so we'll say that are you ready to translate because azure is ready to translate over here okay so we'll say that azure is ready to translate 
from one particular language to another. So let's go ahead and let's mention that. So we will say that we are ready to translate from English language. OK, we are ready to translate from English language. So I'll just go ahead and mention that over here. OK, let's go ahead and let's run this code and let's see up till here whether it works or not. We have not yet ran our full code. OK, uh, we have not yet written our full code. We are yet to write it, but let's see up till here with, uh, whether it works or not. Before I go ahead, I can see some doubts in the chat. So here Panara says, what will be charge of content translation per word? OK, so uh, here it's different uh, Panara. Here I'm using a speech service, so I'm, I will not be uh, charged based on character of a word. OK, basically there are many things that will happen. So uh, you will be charged based on uh, voice because what we are doing, we are converting our voice in one language to another language, right? So some voice will be involved. Azure will output a voice. You will be charged on that voice also. You will be charged on uh, the length of uh, translation that has happened. Let's say I have translated only two words. OK, so you'll be charged based on that. Uh, let's say I've translated 20 words. So, uh, since you have uh, translating more number of words, more uh, charge will get deducted. OK, uh, so since if you remember Panara, we use standard tier. Uh, in standard tier, uh, uh, it's not uh, given to us the exact uh, cost that will be deducted. OK, because there are a lot of things involved. Uh, so it's not given to us that for uh, one character, let's say I have one character R. OK, character means anything that I can type on my keyboard. So I have alphabetical characters, uh, symbolic characters, digit characters, so on. So it's not like per character, it will be, let's say, $0.1 or something like that. That fixed cost is not given. All standard tiers is depending on the length of translation that you are doing, you will be deducted that particular cost. OK, so it does not in the even in the documentation. If you search for Microsoft's documentation on this, you will not get a fixed cost on the same for speech service. I'm talking about OK for other services. There are fixed costs involved, but for speech services, there is no fixed cost because you will not only be uh, charged based on the character being used, the number of characters. For example, let's say I have a word India. So here there are five characters involved. OK, let's have a word like uh, Australia. So here there are around nine characters involved. So here you will be charged more. OK, fine. So there is no fixed cost given. Uh, all standard tier says is that you will be charged based on uh, the characters that are involved, but there is no fixed cost that is given. It gives you approximate cost, but there is no fixed cost for speed service. For other services, there is a fixed cost. So it's easy for us to estimate that. OK, how much money will be deducted? OK. Uh, but just to give you a brief, uh, so I've used these speech services a lot. Uh, I've translated many, many essays and uh, within a month, hardly around, uh, uh, you can say around 200 or 300 rupees were deducted. OK, I have not uh, seen a month where more than 200 or 300 rupees are deducted. OK, so just to give you a rough idea of how much it charges, so it's not that much. OK, and I've used this service a lot for translating essays, for doing many, many things. OK, so in my scenario, I mean, even I've used it, uh, uh, you know, like I've used it a lot, and even after using it a lot, hardly it has costed me around 200 to 300 rupees. But if you're asking for fixed cost, there is no fixed cost that standard tier provides us for this speech service. OK, fine. Now, uh, pra Pardha says how to differentiate the language. I didn't uh, understand your question, Parbha. Parbha, uh, all we are doing over here is we are just saying to Azure that our output language will be one out of the three. So we are giving three options to Azure that, OK, the user might uh, select any one out of the three. OK, so depending on what the user selects, Azure has to do the work for us. OK, your, we have just given the options. Fine. Uh, so Panara 
Parda, I hope your doubts are cleared. If not, uh, let me know. If I went to a different angle, let me know. Yes, Parda. OK, fine. Let's go ahead. And now what we'll do is uh, we'll just go ahead and try to run this code up till this point. Let's go ahead and let's run the code up till this point over here. So what we'll do is um, here. Let me open the folder in the terminal in the folder. I want to run this file, right? The name of the file is. Translating. Speech dot py. OK, translating. Speech dot py. OK, here it says Python not found. Uh, OK, I'll do one thing. I'll just directly click on run button. I guess it is not uh, taking the Python compiler on its own. Let me click on this run button. Uh, it's not doing it on its own. It's asked. It asked me to select a Python interpreter. Let's select one. I'll say Python 3.11. OK, after that, if I try to run, it should work. Let me now run. Ha huh. and now over here we are getting some errors. Let's go ahead and let's try to solve them. Now, what are these errors? Let's go ahead and let's try to understand about it. So this error is with respect to uh, this class that I have just called over here. Uh, let me check if I have called it in a wrong manner. I don't think so. My code uh, seems fine over here. OK, my code seems fine. OK, what else could be the issue up till this point? Let's see. I hope there is no importing related issue. If it is an yeah, importing related issue, I'll do one thing. Yeah, I'll do one thing over here. Uh, OK, I'll do one thing. First of all, I'll just clear the terminal. I'll go inside this folder called translate. Speech. OK, inside this folder I have this file, right? Here, what will I do is just to be safe. Although it did not give me a, a library error, but still let me go ahead and let me install this library just to be safe. Ah, fine, it says requirement already satisfied, so that is fine. Now I'll just go ahead and I'll try to run the code up till this particular point. OK, so let me just go ahead and let me run the code over here. OK, I have. A error. Let's understand why it could be. Uh, I have correctly called my. File inside the file I have. OK, sorry, I have this folder inside the folder. I have a file and inside the file I have this class. And I have correctly called it. I don't see any issue with respect to this. Ah, I can even see the class over here. OK. Mm, and my key is also. Given correctly. OK. Fine. It says. OK, our code is fine over here. It's still giving us an issue while calling this class. Why it could be. Mm -hmm. To access invalid address. OK, my address is also fine. There's no issue with respect to address. I will do one confirmation. I hope that uh, the key that I gave was correct and it was correct, though. I'll just do one confirmation. It is correct. OK. Fine. Here, I'll just go ahead, run the code. OK, same issue with respect to this. All right, so it says that while choosing while calling this class, we are getting an error. Although. Uh, OK, my mistake guys, my mistake. I should not pass endpoint here. I should pass region. My mistake. Uh, sorry, I, I need to pass the region. Yes, the second thing that it expects over here is region, right? Uh, fine. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and let's pass region. Fine. After this, it should work. My mistake. I'll just go ahead, run it. 
fine and at least it gives us this text saying ready to translate that's exactly what we wanted to do it says ready to translate from this input language the input language that we had passed was english language and that's exactly what it says okay so up till your whatever code we have written is working okay what whatever we have whatever code we have written is working okay so this was just the validation check now let's go ahead what i will do next is i'll just go ahead and pass other configurations up till now i've only passed the key and region what about endpoint so let me go ahead and let me pass that okay so over here i'll just go ahead and pass more details i'll go ahead and pass more details over here i will say that i want to access a resource whose key is saved in my code so i'll just pass that key but there are uh but that resource is created in which region so i'll just go ahead and pass that region over here also okay and this progress i'll just go ahead and i will save it in a variable okay uh, so i have uh, entered another configuration in the same manner is this that this configuration i'll be using for a different purpose okay fine so uh, the first configuration was to just mention that okay i want to do translation from one language to another second configuration is for understanding speech right i need to pass speech from my microphone and that speech will be given later to azure so for that speech also i need to mention the configuration details okay so i have mentioned the translation configuration details but that translation how will it happen first i need to pass speech so i am passing the configuration details for my speech as well okay fine let's go ahead and over here i will say that the target language should be any one out of the three it should either be french spanish or hindi so i will just give a hint to the user that user make sure that you choose a target language that is one out of the three okay so i'll say enter a language enter a language fr for french okay uh, you can enter es for spanish so i will ask user to enter what the user wants to do okay uh, hi for hindi and so on so i'll say enter a target language of your choice okay and uh, let me go ahead and let me run the code i'll do some changes in the code and let's see what will we do so i'll just go ahead and run okay your it gives a uh, text to us exactly like we wanted however what i want to do is i want to print this in a different line so let me go ahead and let me print this in a different line instead of printing all of the words in the same line let me print it in a different line so i'm using this special uh, command called backward slash n which makes sure that the upcoming text will be shown to you in a new line okay this command stands for new line all right all right let's go ahead and what i will do is i'll again go ahead and uh, run my code and now you can see the sentence that is shown to us is uh, uh, shown to us properly it's not shown to us in a single line it's shown to us in uh, multiple lines this is more better okay for readability purposes all right fine uh, so what i will do is i will say that if the target language if the user if what the user has entered is anything within these three languages then only go ahead and do the translation otherwise don't do the translation okay so i will say what user has entered if it is among the output languages that was specified earlier if it's one of the target languages or output languages that was specified earlier then only do the translation otherwise don't do it okay if this happens then only do it otherwise don't do it i will say else i'll keep it empty for now okay so if the target language mentioned by user is any out of these three target languages then what to do okay let's go ahead and let's write the code for the same so what will we do is we'll just go ahead and mention configuration that okay i will be speaking something i'll be giving a speech that speech will be taken from where it will be taken from my microphone right so where you are let me go ahead and let me mention the same i'll just go ahead and i will mention the same 
I will say that what I'll be speaking, okay, what I'll be speaking uh, will be taken from my microphone. Okay, that audio will be taken from my microphone. So I'll just go ahead and do the same and I will say use the default microphone. I'll say use the default microphone. Fine, so the input speech that I'll be giving will be taken from my default microphone. All right, let me go ahead and let me save the progress up till this point in a variable. OK, after that, so my input will be taken from my microphone, right? But what should happen later? That input should be translated, right? That input should be uh, translated. So let me go ahead and let me mention the configuration details for the same that this input that I'll be giving should be translated later on, but I'll have to mention the details of those of that translation that I want to do. OK, so I will say that the speech that I'll be giving, I want it to translate to other language. I want it to translate to other language. Uh, but for that, I'll have to go ahead and mention the details. OK, so configuration details, I'll just go ahead and I will pass one by one. I'll just go ahead and make sure that I pass my configuration details. OK, fine. So I've gone ahead and uh, done that. After that, Azure will be ready to do the translation. So I will ask the user to speak now. I will ask the user to speak now. OK, so over here will ask the user to speak now. And uh, fine, let's see if at least up till this point it is working or not. At least up till this point, it is working or not. Over here, I'll just go ahead and run our code. OK, here it says there is an indentation issue. OK, let's check what is that indentation issue. It says at line Han. OK, fine. For now, uh, if the target language is not within these three specified languages, in that case, we don't want to do anything else. I'll just say pass. OK, fine. Let's do that. OK, let's give an input. Let's suppose our input is Hindi, so we'll just write HI. However, it's shown to us in a not so readable manner. OK, so what I will do is this text that I'm writing over here. Let me go ahead and let me show you the text in a new line. The text that I'm writing, I'll show it to you in a new line. That way it will be better. Let us run our code. OK, now you can see whatever input I'm giving will be uh, shown in a new line. Fine, let's say input is HI. That means I want to I want my output language to be Hindi. OK, input language is uh, obviously English. Output language is Hindi, let's say. Fine, at that time it is asking us to speak now. That is exactly what we wanted. Fine, so our code is working up till this point. Now let's go ahead and let's write the remaining lines in our code. OK, so we'll say that whatever the user speaks, uh, go ahead and uh, translate it. OK, whatever the user speaks, go ahead and translate it. So I'll just go ahead and mention the same that whatever the user speaks, we just want to go ahead and translate the same. For this, we'll need to save uh, our configuration details in this variable. Same variable I'll use over here. OK, fine. Over here, I'll just say whatever user is speaking, recognize it in one go. OK, recognize it in one go. And. Just get the translation. OK, fine. And Azure will give us a result that OK, what is the user speaking? OK, Azure will give a result to us. What is the user speaking? Fine. And uh, whatever it is speaking, I'll just go ahead and I will try to see whether it is speaking in English language or not. OK, I'll just try to see whether it is speaking in English language or not. OK, let me just go ahead. Let me print this entire result. I'll just go ahead, print the entire result over here. OK, let's run our code. Uh, let's suppose our target language is Hindi. It is asking us to speak now. Let's speak. OK. Here it says this uh, method does not exist. Recognize underscore. Sorry, uh, it's called once. 
Okay, recognize underscore once underscore async. Okay, so we spell, there was a spelling mistake. We have corrected it. Okay, let's do it again. Let's say our target language is Hindi. It will then ask us to speak. Okay, so over here, uh, I did not speak anything. Fine, it still gave us some result over here. Fine, here it says result cancelled. Okay. Here it is saying result cancelled. Not an issue. Fine. We'll do one thing. Uh, here I did not speak anything. Let me try to speak something and let's see. I'll just go ahead and run the code. Good morning. Okay. No, I was trying to say good morning, but it didn't. Your my good morning. It still ended directly. Okay. Uh, so what I will do is I don't want to end. Mm, I want it to wait till I speak. Okay, I want it to wait over here till I speak properly. Uh, I hope in the above code I have not done any mistake. Fine, I'll do one thing. I'll run a loop. Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll run a loop. Uh, but even uh, without running a loop, I'm just thinking, how can I make the code wait over here to get my speech? Okay, because it is not getting my speech. It is not waiting for me to finish my sentence. So I'll just go ahead and wait. We'll let it wait. I'm just thinking over here, what other change I can do in my code? Mm, I'm getting the result. Okay. Let okay. Currently, this is empty. I just want to see the translations. Okay, run it again. Again, it will not wait. Let me give a output language Hindi. Hello. Okay, it did not wait. All right. I wanted to wait in my scenario. Mm, it is not waking. It's not waiting fully. Uh, this method is absolutely right. I'm not doing any mistake over here. The configuration details are right as well. Okay, there is no issue with respect to my configuration details also. Mm -hmm. Okay, here there is no issue with respect to my configuration details. It is not waiting fully. Recognize one of the so it will take the speech in one go only. And it will then try to translate it, which is what I want. OK, here we'll just go ahead and we'll just ask the code to wait a little. I'm just thinking, I hope I have not done any configuration issue in any of my above lines of code. If I don't think so. Uh, whatever code I wrote, seems to be fine over here but still i'm just doing a cross check uh, it seems to be fine i don't see any issue as such okay fine i'll do one thing uh let's go over here and the main issue that is happening is uh, the code is not waiting for us to get our speech uh, no metal. We don't have to uh, use uh, the endpoint. My endpoint I'll use later on. Endpoint is fine. Endpoint will use later on going forward. Issue is with not with respect to our endpoint. Mm -hmm. Any mistake that I could be doing? Any other mistake over here? Mm -hmm. I have mentioned all the required configuration details. It is not waiting. Issue is that it is not waiting. Mm -hmm. My audio configuration is also fine. Issue is not with respect to that audio configuration. Mithul. OK, I have mentioned what I want to translate. I have mentioned that before translation, you will be getting some audio. I've mentioned configuration of that as well. 
can we add buffer time we can do that but by default only it should give us the buffer time but fine i'll do one thing uh let's progress ahead and what we'll do is we'll write our full code and then we'll try to see why it's not waiting okay till then let's write our full code okay we'll see get the translation from our target language okay which would be english target language and whatever it is just print it okay fine the issue is it is not waiting fine we'll make it wait we'll make it wait somehow that's not a issue all right fine uh, let's go ahead over here it is not waiting we'll solve that issue uh, it's a minor issue we'll just go ahead and we'll solve it till then what we'll do is we'll write the rest of the code okay so that our time is not wasted fine so what we want to do over here is once we get our translation okay i want to convert it to another language right so in order to convert it to another language i will have to mention the voice in which the uh, azure platform will speak okay so i will say that let's suppose if the user has inputted french language then the voice will be something called fr henry neural there are different voices that are supported in azure just to show you show it to you i'll just go ahead and show that to you over here there are different voices that are supported in azure you can see the language support and there are different voices speech translation uh huh here you can see different voices that are there okay so if you want to speak something in arabic language uh, you have certain voices in hindi language you have certain voices and so on so i'm just using the supported voices okay whatever is the voice code that voice code you have to just mention in your uh, coding file okay so if it's french language i want to use this particular code okay if it's a different language i will use a different code and so on so let's say if it's spanish language if it's spanish language i want to use uh this code called elvira neural elvira neural okay it's called elvira neural make sure that the code that you are writing is absolutely correct there if there is one spelling mistake here and there it won't work okay fine um so why or i'll just go ahead and i'll just mention that if it's uh, if the user has inputted uh if the user has said that he wants to convert to french language use this particular voice if the user says convert to spanish language use this particular voice if the user says convert to hindi language use a different voice so over here we'll just go ahead and mention the voices okay fine so we have done that next what to do let's see so over here i will just say that based on the translation that has happened okay based on the translation that has happened uh, go ahead and speak that voice okay so i'll just go ahead and mention that configuration as well so here i will just say speech config okay so my output uh, that azure will be giving azure will speak something right okay see i will be speaking something in english language but azure will speak in a different language so configuration of that i'll just go ahead and mention i will say azure will speak but what will be the voice in which the azure speaks so i will say that choose the voice based on what uh, the user has entered okay based on what target language a user has entered if the user has entered fr uh, In, uh, if the user has entered something called fr then use this particular voice if the user has entered something called es then use this particular voice so i've just mentioned that configuration okay fine let's go ahead and what we will do is after mentioning the configuration let's go ahead and let's wake up azure in order for it to speak okay so this configuration i'll pass it to azure so that azure is woken up so this configuration that i have mentioned let me pass it to azure so i'll just go ahead and i will pass this configuration to azure speech synthesizer okay with this this configuration that i have just uh, you know created it will be passed to azure 
fine and that progress i'll just go ahead and i will save it in a variable that progress i'll just go ahead and i will save it in a variable over here fine once uh, that configuration is passed to azure i will ask azure to speak okay i will ask azure to speak that okay you have you have been given the configuration azure now please go ahead and please speak okay please go ahead and please speak in one go please speak in one go and what to speak well this uh, translation that was obtained earlier that translation will go ahead and will speak okay we'll just go ahead and we'll save it in a variable that translation that we obtained earlier okay uh, that the uh, that azure platform will have to speak fine and whatever speech azure platform says that will try to get to us okay fine uh, that's probably it and over here i'll just go ahead and that should be it i'll just go ahead and save the progress in a variable let's go ahead and let's run the code we'll solve this issue that we had previously previously the issue that we had was we were trying to uh, speak something but azure was not waiting for us to speak okay to let us finish our speech let's see we'll write our target language let's say it's in the good okay it is not waiting for us to speak okay um your solve this issue uh it is not waiting for us to complete our speech in this scenario i'm just thinking uh is there any configuration issue that i could have done because by default it should wait for a few seconds okay this method by default waits for a few seconds you can see uh it waits for a maximum of 15 seconds of audio okay maximum of 15 seconds so this method itself should do the waiting job for us uh if it is not doing the waiting job let me check if any if in any of my previous lines of code have i missed something mm, translation details are passed audio configuration i have passed any other detail that i could have missed mm, target language okay this is there mm -hmm. it is asking us to speak now but it is not waiting for us to complete what we want to say okay in this scenario what else could i be doing mm -hmm. Any other change that I could be doing over here? I don't. Okay, if at all, if it is not waking, that's only because of my configuration details. Apart from that, there is no issue whatsoever. Okay, if at all, it's not waiting. It's only because of our configuration details over here. So I'm just thinking, uh, what could we do for it to wait properly? what could we do mm, here i don't think i have done any mistake as such okay i will just do a cross check one last time it is not waiting some configuration issue i'm i'm yet to fix uh, what could be my configuration issue audio config is fine i have not done any spelling mistake if at all there is something it's because of some spelling mistake that i have done apart from that the code seems fine if at all there is a issue it's only because of our configuration details recognize once a sync okay and the rest of the code is absolutely fine any issue that we could have over here okay i'll do one thing same code i ran uh, it yesterday for one of my batch so i'll just go ahead and i will try to get code from there uh, maybe i've done some mistake over here maybe i'm doing some spelling mistake okay so what i will do is same code i'll get it from there let's see this was the code 
that I had used. There I had used four target languages: French, English, Hindi, Kannada. Uh, uh, sorry, Kannada because we had Bangalore audience uh, yesterday. Fine. Let me run this code. Uh, all I will do is I'll just go ahead and uh, change the key, and that's it. The rest of the code will remain the same. Okay. Let me enter an input. Let's say the input is Hindi. Good afternoon. We are in a webinar. Namaskar. Hum ek webinar mein hai. Okay. So this code works. Uh, the one that I wrote yesterday. Uh, I will just cross check this. Why did our code uh, not work? Any mistake that I was doing here? Fine. I've just used a loop. That's fine over here. That does not matter. Uh, but it was not waiting for us to complete what we want to say. It was not waiting. It was directly going ahead. Mm. Fine. I don't see any other issue. Micro microphone setting. Use default microphone. Yesterday also I used default microphone. Today also I did the same. Yesterday also we used default microphone, and today also we did absolutely the same. Uh, we have not done any change. Some spelling mistake I might have done today. This was yesterday's code, and you can see it worked. Mm, this was yesterday's code. Let's say I want to convert in French language. It will go ahead and convert it. Good morning. We are in a webinar. Bonjour. Nous participons à un webinaire. Okay, I hope you can hear uh, the translation, right? Are you able to hear it, guys? Or not? Because I can hear. Are you able to hear? No? Yes, right? Uh, Ruby, people are able to hear. Okay, so translation is happening. Uh, some class I might have misspelled here and there. Okay, I'll just go ahead and cross check the same. Mm, what mistake I have done? Okay, you are also same class. Recognize one C sync. Okay, fine. All right. Not a issue. Uh, I might not be able to figure out any spelling mistake that I have done today, but fine. This code works. I'll just go ahead and uh, give this code to you in the chat. You can try the code over here. OK, uh, I'm giving my key also, so you don't have to create your own uh, speech resource. You can just take this one and try it in uh, try it yourself. I'll just go ahead and upload the code over here in the chat. Can you try it in Hindi? Yes, I'll try it in Hindi. Let's do it. So now let's say I'm doing it in Hindi. Good morning. We are learning about Azure. AI services. Suprabhat, hum as your ke bari me seek rahe hain. Okay. So you can see it spoke in Hindi as well. Okay. So it does do this translation that we want. Uh, remember that this service is still in its, uh, uh, you know, child phase. It's still not fully developed yet. So fine. Up till now, it's working well, but there are some things uh, uh, I was working for one client. Uh, there were some things that it was not translating exactly like we wanted. Why? Because this service is still, you know, uh, in its child phase. It's not fully accurately built yet. Fine. Up till now, it is working fine. For your simple use case, it will work fine. But there could be some mistakes here and there. Okay. Uh, Harsh says why Java is not used. You can use Java up to you. Okay. Uh, it's just that I prefer Python more. Uh, you can use C sharp as well. Up to you. Okay, you can write code in any programming language. Uh, this is that Python is much more easier for me to write. Okay, I that's why I chose Python. What could be the length of the speech? Ruby, there is no limit. You can speak uh, as much as you want. By default, it will wait for 15 seconds. However, you can change that as well. Okay, you can see in the uh, speech that it was taking by default it uh, waits for 15 seconds you can see 
when I hover over this method, it's written in the note that by default it waits for 15 seconds. However, we can change it with our code if we want to. OK, but by default it waits for 15 seconds. Uh, yes, absolutely you can use C sharp, not at all an issue. Absolutely you can use C sharp as well. Uh, Harsh, uh, see buddy, uh, try to understand over here. Speech service has been created by Azure. You are just using that speech service that is created in Azure. Whichever speech service you use is up to you. I mean, which in whichever language you want to use it is up to you. Speech service is there in Azure. You are not using, you are not creating it. You are just using. In which language you use, that's up to you. Okay, it's just that you should know how to use that particular service in that language. For example, here we have used that particular uh, uh, service in uh, Python language. So absolutely you can use in Java language as well. In the official documentation, they will show you uh, examples with two languages, Python and C-sharp. But to answer your doubt, can you use this uh, service in Java language as well? Absolutely you can use it. Uh, yes, Ruby, there is a uh, cost involved. If you remember, we chose a pricing tier, we chose standard pricing tier. Okay, that will deduct some cost. Uh, as I told you, there are two pricing tiers, uh, free and standard. Free one was not shown to me because I have exhausted that free limit. Okay. Uh, but yes, uh, you can use the free pricing tier and that uh, will not have any cost associated to it whatsoever. Okay. Fine. All right. So you can use this. You can try to run this code in your laptop as well. And this code will work without any issue. Okay. All right. So with this, we have completed our first lab over here. Okay, our first lab was what? Our first lab was to translate speech from one language to another. Okay, our first lab was to translate speech from one language to another. Up till here, guys, did it make sense? The logic behind what, what code we wrote? Guys, did it make sense? Our first lab? Our first lab was to translate speech from one lab to another. Sorry, from one language to another. Uh, yes, you will get the recording. Or she will send the details of the same. Okay. So I hope up till now. Okay, so up till said it makes sense. Okay, I hope to other students also. Uh, the first lab is clear. Okay, I have given the code. You can run the same code in your laptop. The same code will work. Okay, you don't even have to create that uh, resource of speech service. I've already created it. And I've already given you the key in the chat. You can just use it. OK, fine. Now let's go ahead. Uh, now let's move on to our second lab. OK, in our second lab, what we'll be doing is we'll be trying to translate text. So let's go ahead and let's do it. So here, guys, I have some reviews with me. OK, there are five reviews that are shown to you. OK, out of those five reviews, first four are written in uh, English language, whereas the last one is written in not English language. OK, so what I want to do is. Uh, I want to check if the reviews are in English or not. If they are not in English, I want to convert it to English. OK, so what I want to do is I want to use a service in Azure that will check whether the language written in the text is English or not. If it is not English, it will translate it to English. That's what I want to do. So for that, we have to use another Azure service. Azure AI service and that is called translator service. OK, so I'll just go ahead and click on it. Now in order to use this service, I have to create a resource of it. So let's create a resource. OK, this uh, second resource we are creating for our second lab. Our second lab is to translate text from one lab to another. OK, our second lab is to translate text from one lab to another. OK, her says, can you provide the key? Yes, but it's provided in the code only. And I guess one student also pasted the key in the chat so you can use it. However, remember guys that never share your key with others. Here I'm just sharing it just so that you can practice. OK, uh, but remember never ever share your key with others. Here I'm sharing it. It's fine just so that you can practice, but never ever share your key with others. OK, it could uh, be a big security issue. OK, fine. Now let's go ahead. All right, so what we'll do is uh, we'll just go ahead and fill the details over here. Here, what we are doing, 
we are creating a second resource over here. Uh, this resource we are creating for the translator service. OK, and the motive is to translate text from one language to another. Let's go ahead and let's see how to do it. For uh, in order to use the translator service, we have to create a resource of the service. In order to create a resource, we have to fill in these details. First is to mention which subscription do we have to choose for our billing. So you can choose the subscription that you want. Second, you have to select the resource group in which this resource will lie. So let's select the resource group that we created earlier. After that, I'll choose the region in which I want my resource to lie. So let me choose East US. OK, then let me select a name. I will say translate. Text SYN. OK, here it says this name is already in use. So let's take a different name, not an issue. Let's take a different name over here. All right, it says when this name has been used. OK, let's take a different name. Uh, maybe we could ha have something like. This. OK, it seems even this one is already in use. Um, so let me just go ahead and uh, mention. A new name that has not been used up till now. OK, fine. This this seems like a valid name, so this name is valid over here. It has considered it. Uh, it seems it is not in use by anyone, so fine. So I've given a name to this resource. OK, ha. and Srikant has an error that he has got. He has got this error saying no module. OK, so Srikant just run this code, buddy. OK, I'll show that to you. Just run this code. Uh, you all you have to do is just write this one second. So once you are in your terminal, just write this pip install. And. Uh, we use this library, right? So we just want to go ahead and use this, but we just want to install this particular library. OK, let's go ahead and let's install it. So all you have to do is write this code. You're in my scenario. It says I've already installed. That's why I didn't get that error. Srikanth called module not found error. But in your case, you are getting it because you have not installed it up till now. Not an issue, Srikant. I'll just give the code to you in the chat. Just run that code and after that, that error will vanish. OK, after that, you will not get that error. OK, I hope Srikant, your doubt is clear. If there is any other doubt, let me know. OK, fine. Going forward, what we are doing is we are creating a resource for our translator service. Fine, so let's choose a pricing tier for the same. Uh, your guys. Um, you can go ahead and choose the pricing tier. First option is standard pricing tier, wherein you will pay as you go, right? So depending upon the number of characters that you are translating, uh, you have to pay that much amount of money. Whereas in the remaining options, it's like buying a monthly pass. OK, so in this C2 option, uh, you will get to translate maximum of 62.5 million characters. OK. Character means anything that you can type on your keyboard. So for example, if I have a word like India, here there are five characters. If I have a word like India exclamation, here I have six characters and so on. Okay, character means anything that I can type on your keyboard. Fine, so as I mentioned, there are five options I can see. You will also see a free pricing tier uh, if, you are if you are eligible for the same. This is that I have exhausted my free limit. That's why I'm not getting that option. Okay. But fine, you will also see that free option. In my case, I'm not able to see it because I've exhausted the free limit. OK, fine. So what does standard mean? You, this means that you will pay as you go. Depending upon the number of characters that you translate, you will be paid. Uh, you, you will be you know, charged based on that. Whereas the other four options are like a monthly pass. In this C2 option, you will only get to translate maximum of 62.5 million characters. But the benefit of monthly pass is that it will be cheaper, right? Let's say you are trying to translate around 62.5 million characters in this standard tier, and you are translating 62.5 million characters in this C2 tier. Okay, C2 tier will be, uh, uh, you know, cheaper. It, you will you will see that it will be cheaper for you. Okay, so whenever you buy monthly passes, they are cheaper, right? So it's just that. For example, let's say I'm traveling by a train. So instead of buying the ticket every day. Um, I can just buy a monthly pass. Okay, so the that's the logic. 
So in C2 tier, you get a maximum of 62.5 million characters. In C3, you get a maximum of 250 million characters. In C4, you get a maximum of 2.5 billion characters. Okay. Uh, then people complain that there is a lot of gap between C3 and C4. So they introduce this D3 tier over here, wherein you are getting uh, somewhere between 250 million and 2.5 billion. To be exact, you are getting uh, 675 million characters limit. Okay, so you can choose the pricing tier up to you. Fine, I don't want to buy a monthly pass, so I'll choose the standard tier only. Fine. I'm uh, just go ahead, review all the details entered by me. I'm fine with all the details. So I will ask Azure to create this resource. So let me go ahead and let me create this resource over here. So I'll just go ahead, create the resource. Okay, till this resource is creating, Shrikant did the en uh, error vanish, buddy? I hope it did. If it did not, let me know. I hope. You ran the code that I provided to you in the chat, and with that, the error that you are getting would have vanished. Sorry, who was getting the errors? Uh, Srikanth only, no? Oh, yes, it was Srikanth only. Okay, fine. Any other person, if they are getting any error, let me know. All right, let's go ahead, guys, and uh, let's start our second lab now. What we'll what we'll do is we'll start our second lab. Uh, here, what I want to do is I want to translate text. Fine, so let's do it. So I'll create a new coding file over here. Uh, let me call this translate text dot py. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead. And what I'll be doing is I'll be writing code to translate text now. Okay, let's see. So what I want to do is. Uh, First, I'll just go ahead and save all the necessary details. So just like earlier, we saved the key to access the resource, the region in which that resource is, and uh, the link to that resource, right? So let's go ahead and let's uh, store all these details in our coding file. So first, I'll get the key to access this resource. Let's get the key. OK. Now, before we go ahead, Bharat has an issue. Um, Bharat says in his scenario, pip itself is not there. Okay, fine. Uh, so, Bharat, um, you will first have to install that package manager, buddy. Okay. Only once you have that package manager, then only you will be able to install these packages or you will be able to install these libraries. So, you need this package manager or you need this library manager called pip. Okay. Uh, you can just download it. It's readily available on the internet. Okay, you can just search for how to install pip. It's readily available. Just install that package manager and uh, it should be done for you. Okay, so in your case, you do not have that package manager. That's all. Uh, by the way, do you have Python, Bharat? Do you have uh, Python in your laptop? Okay, fine. It seems uh, while uh, installing Python, you get that option to install pip automatically. Fine, it seems you might have not ticked that option, not an issue. You can uh, download that package manager separately as well. Okay, just by a single click of the button, you will find it online. It's not uh, difficult. If you are not able to find, let me know. I'll manually show you how to do it. Okay, fine. Uh, now, let's go ahead. So first I'll save the key, then I will save the region in which I have this resource. Then I'll save the region in which I have this resource. After that, what I will do is I'll go ahead and uh, save the URL to access this particular resource. So let's go ahead and let's save the URL as well. URL is also known as endpoint. So we'll just go ahead and save the endpoint over here. Okay. Fine, let's go ahead. Now what I want to do is first I want to go inside each of these folders. OK, what is my folder's name? I'll just go ahead and save it. So my folder's name is called R E V I E W S. So I'll mention the same R E V I E W S. OK, that is my folder's name. So what I want to do is I want to go inside each file of this folder. So I'll use a loop to do that. I will say go inside each file of this folder. 
in order to do that i will have to import a library called os library since i want to go inside of my files of the operating system i need to download i need to import a library for my operating system so over here i am importing this os library this is the library for our operating system fine so let's say go into our operating system and uh, just list all the files that are there inside this folder okay and once you list them print those file names let's see whether it is able to print those file names first let's see that so over here we'll just go ahead and we'll see whether it is able to print those file names huh. it says folder not found uh why does it say folder not found over here i have this folder called reviews uh we do have this folder over here called reviews mm -hmm. okay and where is it searching why would search for translate speech i wanted to try to search in this translate text folder my mistake this this is a different uh, folder where it is searching okay so let me go over there i will say translate text Ah, huh. here I want to go ahead and run this code. Okay, by default it is going inside translate speech only, not an issue. What we'll do is we'll open this folder in our terminal, and we will just say Python translate text dot py. Ha, huh. fine. So I, exactly as I wanted, first I wanted to see whether it is able to gather the file names inside the folder or not, and it is able to gather the same. Fine. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, I want to see the text inside each of those files. So I will say open that file. Okay, open that file. How to open that file? So first I have to go inside reviews folder, and after that I have to go inside the file of that reviews folder. Okay, so I will say that join the path over here. First, go inside the reviews folder. After going inside reviews folder, go inside the file of that reviews folder. Okay, after going inside the file, uh, open the file. And while opening, you will see a text. Uh, we have to mention encoding for the same. Uh, you might be familiar with this encoding called UTF-8. Right, this is the standard encoding for text characters. So we'll use that encoding only. Fine. And then we'll just ask our code to read the text inside that file. Whatever text is there, we'll just save it in the variable and then we'll just print it to the user. So we'll say print the text. Fine. Let's go ahead. Let's run our code. And let's see whether it is able to read the text. Okay. Here I have an issue. The issue is that uh, I need to mention the syntax correctly. And after correcting that syntax, you will see that our code will work. Okay, fine. So you can see it is going inside review one.txt and reading the review for the same. Then similarly, review two.txt, reading the review. But it's shown to you in a very non readable manner. So what I will do over here is I'll just say first put this big separation and then show this in a new line okay this will be better now let me go ahead and let me do the small change after that it should work fine here uh, there's a one simple mistake in my syntax after correcting it will work okay and now this is much better so i'm able to go inside review one.txt and get its reviews, then inside review2.txt and read its review, then review3.txt, get its review, and so on. Okay, fine. Uh, now that this is done, uh, what we will do is we'll go ahead and we will translate the text. So, what I want to do is if the text that I'm reading is not in English, I want to convert it to English. So, first I need to detect the language of the text. In order to detect the language of the text, what I will have to do is I will have to go to this link and I will have to add one more addition to this link 
called detect. Okay. So this API, what it will do is, okay. Uh, here it will try to detect the language of the text. Okay, using this API, we'll try to detect the language of the text. Fine. So in order to pass a request to this API, let's go ahead and let's first uh, mention all the configuration details. Fine. So in order to pass a request to this API, uh, what are the details? So first I will just say that the API to which I'm passing a request is of some version. Right, so there will be different versions of this detect API. Um, I will choose the latest one, which is 3.0. You can use previous versions also. However, there will be some issues in those previous versions. Okay, so you can choose the version to which uh, you want to pass your request. Okay, uh, after that, what you will do is you will just go ahead and mention more details. So here, what we'll do is we'll mention are authentication related details. Let's do that. So first thing that I will do is I'll go ahead and I will pass my key. OK, so let's go ahead and let's pass our key. So we'll just go ahead, pass key for the same. Let's do that. Our key is already saved in our coding file. Let's pass that. OK, after passing the key, I want to go ahead and pass my region in which I have created the resource. So let's go ahead and let's pass the region as well. So here we'll go ahead, we'll pass the region. After passing the region, another thing that I will do is I'll mention the content type that this request that I'm passing, I will pass it in JSON format, okay? You guys might be familiar with JSON format. If you're not familiar, just remember what I'm passing over here, the configuration details. It seems it is in the form of a dictionary data structure, right? And JSON is similar to dictionary data structure for those of you who don't know. Fine. So I'll say whatever details I'll be passing, I'll be passing in uh, JSON uh, type. Okay. That means dictionary type, basically. Okay. In simple words, dictionary type. All right. After doing that, uh, I'll just go ahead and pass my main thing. Okay. After passing a header to the request, let me pass the body also. So what I will do over here is I'll essentially pass my text, which is which will be inside a JSON. OK. So let me pass that main text over here, the one that I got earlier, the same thing that I'll pass over here. Fine. Once that is done, what I will do is I'll pass a request. So let's go ahead. Let's pass a request. In order to do it, I will import the request library. Let's go ahead and let's import the request library over here. So we'll go ahead and uh, pass a request to the URL that we had earlier, right? To this URL. And while passing the request, there are some uh, configuration details that I have to pass. So let's go ahead and let's pass the same. So I'm passing a request to this API. What is the version for that API that has been passed over here? Then after that, I'm passing a request. So I need to mention the headers for my request. So let me go ahead and let me pass the headers for my request. After that, I also need to pass the main body of my request in JSON. So let me pass the main body of my request in JSON as well. OK, with that request will be passed. And once it is passed, I'll get the response back. Let's get the response back. If the if the request is given in JSON format, the response will also be given in JSON format only. OK, so response will also be given in JSON format. Once it is given, I'll just go ahead and print the response that is given to us. Fine, let's go ahead and let's see. Uh, over here. Let me go ahead, let me run our code. Fine, it is printing the reviews. At the end, what it will do is uh, it will also show us uh, the response that we got from that API. So for every review, we have got some response. You can see. OK, for every review, we have got some response back. All right, here what we want is we only want one thing, the language in which the review was written. OK, so currently the response is obtained in the form of a list. So guys, how to get the first element inside of a list? Here I just have one element only. You can see 
this entire value is inside a list and that is one element only okay this entire thing is one element guys how to get the first element inside of a python list anybody remembers any python programmers out here how do we get the first element inside of a list okay before that over here there are some uh, doubts panara mentions what is the accuracy level of this azure services uh, is it required a manual review yes currently i would not expect uh, uh, you to fully believe these services there are some manual reviews that you should do from your end okay although they have uh, i mean 90 Eight percent, ninety-nine percent of the of your work will be done without any issues. But still, I would recommend you to do a quick review at the end, manual review at the end. Okay, because it's still in its a, a child phase. Okay, it's not yet fully developed, but still, it's very very good. So, if you are asking whether you should do a manual review at the end, yes, you should. Okay. Okay. Uh, over here. Uh, Pardha says how to run the code, command to run the code in terminal. Okay, Pardha, all you have to do over here is just write the keyword Python, then the file that you want to run. So let's say I have this file called translate text.py. So I'll just write translate text.py. Okay, and that's it. And that will run the code for us. Remember that where you are running the code, the file that you are trying to run. Uh, you should go inside the folder first where you are trying to run that file. So, for example, we are trying to run this file called translate text. This is inside a folder called translate text folder. So, we first went inside that folder. And inside that folder, I want to run this particular file. Okay. So, first go inside that folder in your terminal. Okay. And then try to run the file. You know how to run it? Just write this command. Just use the command Python and then the file that you want to run. Huh. Srikant has given the correct answer. We had asked the question that over here, uh, we are getting a response for every review. The response is shown to us in a list. How to get the first element of a list using index, right? And the first element of a list will have index zero. So here we'll use index zero. Fine. Let's go ahead. Let's run our code again. And now you will see that we are getting the first element from that list. Those square brackets have vanished now. Okay, now uh, inside those square brackets, we have a dictionary. Now, what I want to do is I want to get this particular value in the dictionary. This particular value will be obtained using a key called language. So let me go ahead and let me get the value using that key called language. Okay, and uh, I will just say that whatever is the language detected, I'll just go ahead and I will save it in my coding file. I say language detected. And whatever is the language detected, I'll just go ahead and I'll print it to the user. Okay. And before printing, uh, fine. Let me print it right now as it is. Okay. So for example, uh, you can see uh, this review was written in French language. So I'm getting the language detected as French. Okay. Let me write it in a better manner over here. I will say language of, okay, I will say original language of review is this. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead. Let's run our code. And uh, after running our code, this will be much better. Fine. Yeah, now you can see, for example, for this review, the original language for review is French. All right. Now what, what we want to do is if the original language, if the original language that is detected is not equal to English, if it is not equal to English, then I want to convert it to English. Okay. For that, I will need an API. So let me go ahead and let me use that API. Okay. So I will just go ahead and I will use that API. So after going to this resource link, I will have to add uh, an extra path over here called translate. Called translate. 
So what will happen is this particular text will be added at the end of this path. Okay. And whatever request I want to send will go to this entire path then. Okay, fine. That's what I'm doing basically. Fine. So a new API, uh, I want uh, this will be a new API to which I want to send requests to. So just like I did earlier, um, now also I will do the same exact thing. Previously, we passed our uh, parameters, right? Our headers and our body. Now also we'll do the same exact thing. Fine. Let's go ahead. Let's do the same exact thing. All right, fine. Uh, here, just a small change apart from mentioning, uh, mentioning API version will also say that yes, we want to translate. So from what language do we want to translate? So we'll say that I want to translate from this language that was detected. So translate from this language to which language? So I will say to English. To English. All right, that's what I want to do. Rest of the things I'll keep the same, no change at all. And at the end, I'll just go ahead and pass a request. Just like I did earlier, I passed the request, right? Now also I will do the same exact thing. After passing the request, I'll get a response back from the user. And whatever is the response, I just want to print it. Fine, let's save. Uh, any mistake we have done in our code, then we'll try to correct it. Apart from that, it seems fine over here. Just a small issue in our code. After correcting it, now it will work. Okay, so if the language is not English, it will convert it to language. For example, for this review, the original language was English, so it did not do any translation. But for this review, the original language was not English, right? It was French. So it did some translation and it is giving the response of that translation over here. Okay, fine. Uh, what we'll do is uh, currently we are getting this response. We are getting it in the form of a list. In order to get the first element inside of the list, we'll use index zero. Fine. Let's do that. And with this, those square brackets that was surrounding this dictionary will vanish. Now we are getting this dictionary altogether. Uh, here, I want to get this particular list okay in order to get this particular list i have to use this key called translations so let me use this key over here called translations okay that will give me access to this list value fine let's do that let's run our code again okay now you can see i'm getting access to that list value exactly like i wanted fine here from this list, I want to gain access to this dictionary. This is the first element inside the list. We know first element inside of the list will be accessed using index zero. So I'll use index zero. With that, the square brackets surrounding the dictionary will vanish. Okay. And I'll gain access to the first element inside of the list. And you can see that. Fine. I'm getting access to the first element inside of the list, which is this dictionary. Here, what I want is I want to get this entire uh, value. Okay, that value will be obtained using this key called text. So over here, I'll just say, give me the value that is present at this key called text. That's it. I'll just go ahead and try to run our code. And with this, you, you can see it has worked correctly. We have our original review. It was written in French language. And since it was not an English language, it has been converted to English. Okay, before that, I'll just give a heading over here that now this text that you are seeing is a translated text or it's a translated review. So I'll say translated review. Okay. Fine, I'll go and run the code one last time. And what our code is doing, it is checking the language of the review if the language is not English, it, it converts it to English. For example, for the last review, you can see the language detected was not English, it was French. Since it was not English, it uh, translated the review to English. And that's what we wanted to do in our second lab. So in our first lab, we translated speech from one language to another. In our second lab, we translated text from one language to another. I'll go ahead and give the code to you in your chat.
so that you can run the code uh, right now okay is this that you will have need your reviews also so make sure that you have the reviews folder available with you okay but i'll give the code to you in your chat okay fine with this we have done two laps now we'll take a short uh, break tea slash coffee break and we'll be back in around 10 minutes okay after 10 minutes we'll resume our journey and we'll move on to our third and final lap for today but up till your guys uh, whatever we did uh, did it make sense we have done two laps first lap was to translate speech from one language to another second lap was to translate text from one language to another so guys did everybody understand it yes or no any doubts guys whatsoever did it make sense parbha panara shrikant yes swapna viva okay fine all right so uh, we'll take a short tea slash coffee break we'll be back in 10 minutes and after that we'll move on to a third and final lab after covering that third and final lab i'll give you a short demo of how you can schedule your ai 900 examination what type of questions you could expect and so on okay fine so let's take a short break and we'll be back
Hello guys, I shared the complimentary learning achievement badge. Please guys follow the step and redeem your badge. Guys, those who are done with the batch, please put done on chat box so I can see who are done with the batch. If anyone facing problem, let me know on chat box. Guys, those ones still remaining, please redeem your badge and put done on chat box.
welcome back to the session everyone hope all of you are back after the break now let's resume so i guess there were some doubts in the chat let me just go ahead and let me check so over here parda has a doubt parda says uh, instead of converting it to english language can we convert it to any other language yes you can do it so you are saying parda irrespective of the original review uh, convert it to a different language like for example here what we did was only if the review was not in english then only we converted it to english what you want here is irrespective of whether it was in english or not you want to convert to a different language we can absolutely do that okay there are just a few lines of uh changes that we'll do in our code so just to show that to you what we'll do is here uh we will just say that we want to convert to hindi language and this conversion i want to do uh irrespective of whether the original language was detected in english or not okay so i will remove this if clause okay so i want to do this conversion every time so this if condition i will just remove fine and now what will happen parda is uh, irrespective of the original review whether it was in english or not english we are trying to convert it to hindi fine let's go ahead and let's do it so for example here i'll just go ahead and run my code and uh, you can see what it is doing is every review it is converting it to hindi language you can see that every review it is converting it to hindi language so you can do that as well okay parda says not like that just want to send the text through ha ha you can do that parda is just that your my text i have obtaining it through this file instead of that you can obtain it from the user itself using the input function uh, parda if you remember in our last uh, lab we did use input function so you can do that okay so yes you have that capability you can do it is just that here we are getting the text from the file instead of uh, the text being hard coded inside of a file you can get it dynamically from the user as, as well using which function guys input function input function is used to get the text dynamically from the user okay fine so that was our second lab now let's go ahead guys and let's move on to our third and final lab for today so in this lab what we'll be doing is we'll be trying to analyze the text so we'll have some reviews same reviews we'll have but we'll try to analyze them that what is the sentiment in those reviews are the reviews positive negative what are they okay lots of other things we'll be doing fine so let's go ahead and let's do the same in order to do this we'll need a third service in azure ai let's look at it and uh, the service that we'll need is this language service so this language service will uh, help us to analyze the language in the given text okay so let's go ahead and let's create a resource of this service so I'll click on the create button to create a resource of the service and i'll just go ahead and fill in the details of the form so the first field in the form is subscription you know subscription is nothing but the billing unit for the resources that you are consuming so you have to choose the subscription from where you want your cost to get deducted then second field in the form is asking me to select the resource group for the resource that i'm creating so let me select the resource group that i have created previously in this webinar okay third field over here is asking me to choose the region for this resource so you can choose any region that you want make sure that uh, the region that you are choosing is closest to your end customer let's say you are making this resource for your end customer who is in us then you will select the region that is closer to us just for better latency that's all okay otherwise there is no other requirement uh, then after that we have this name field over here so let's give a name to this resource so we'll just give a name saying analyze text uh, syn let's see if this name is valid it is it is valid over here um make sure that you give a unique name this name that we are giving should not be used by anyone um else okay so this name that we have given is a unique name 
so no other person has created a, a resource for this service using this name fine then we have to choose the pricing tier here you can see we have free tier standard tier in free tier of course you have a, a limit of how how much you can do okay so it depends upon you here we'll choose free tier only fine let me click on this checkbox that yes we agree with the terms and conditions after that i'll just review the details entered by me and since i'm fine with the details i'll just ask azure to go ahead and create the resource for me so let me ask azure to go ahead and create the resource so within a few seconds the resource should be created and then we'll see what to do next once the resource is created we'll see what to do next so guys, our first lab was what? Our first lab was to translate speech from one language to another. Our second lab was to translate text from one language to another. Now our third lab is to analyze text. Okay, so we'll analyze sentiment in the text. We'll analyze the entities mentioned in the text and so on. Okay, let's wait for this resource to get created. After that, we will start with our code. Okay, it should take a few more seconds. Within a few seconds, the resource should be created for us. All right, it's almost done. And fine, and now you can see the resource has been created. All right, so let me go to that resource, the one that I have created just now, analyze text, S-Y-N. Okay, now that the resource is created, let me go ahead and let me uh, use this resource by writing some code okay so what i will do is i'll go ahead create a coding file over here called uh, analyze.py okay and here one by one i'll go ahead and mention my code okay so what i want to do is i mention my uh, i'm reiterating my goal again i have some reviews with me same reviews that we worked with before the lunch break i have the same reviews but now I want to analyze the reviews. Before the lunch break, we translated the reviews from one language to another. Now I want to analyze the reviews. I want to understand the sentiment mentioned in the reviews. I want to recognize the entities mentioned in the reviews and so on. Okay, fine. Let's see how to do it. First, I'll go ahead and mention the key to access the resource that I have just created. Uh, so here, I'll just copy the key paste over here. After that, I'll just go ahead and uh, get the URL to access the resource or the endpoint to access the resource. So let me go ahead and let me save that in my coding file as well. Okay, that is done. Now what I will do is uh, these um, details, I want to pass it to Azure. So how to do it? So in order to pass these credentials to Azure, I will need a class which I will import. So from Azure uh, folder, there is another folder called core. From that core, there is a file called credentials. From that file, I will try to import this class called Azure key credentials. Okay, I'll try to import this class called Azure key credentials. Okay, the same class I'll try to call it. This class will do what? It will pass these configuration details to Azure. Right, so first, I'll pass the key, okay, so that it knows that, okay, uh, this will be the key to access the resource. I'll just go ahead and save this in a variable, okay? But I've just mentioned that, okay, the resource that I want to access has this particular key, but there are multiple resources that you could have in Azure, right? So which resource you want to access? We want to access a resource that helps us to analyze text, okay? So if you want to access the resource that will help you to analyze text, you will need a class for the same. So let's go ahead and let's mention the class for the same. Okay. And here what we'll do is we'll say to Azure that, okay, I want to access the resource that will help me to analyze text, but what is the URL of that resource? In other words, what is the endpoint of that resource? I'll pass this endpoint. Uh, then what is the credential to access it? I'll go ahead and pass the credential also. 
Okay, fine. And uh, I'll just save these details that I have passed to Azure in a variable. Okay, fine. Now what I want to do is I want to go inside reviews folder and uh, I want to uh, read the reviews that are there inside each of these files. So if you remember, we had written the code for the same earlier before the lunch break, same code I'll reuse over here. And uh, in order for me to go inside each of these files of the reviews folder, I will need my OS library. So I'll just go ahead and import it. Fine, after this, it will work. Now let me open this file in my terminal and let me run the code in this coding file. Okay, here it says no module called Azure.co. Okay, no issues. What will we do is we'll install it. Okay, it says no. Okay, fine. Let's do one thing. If I'm not able to install the file separately, let me install the entire core folder. Uh, just a spelling mistake. We'll correct it. And after that, it will work. Okay, fine. Now let's run our code. Let's see what happens. Ha. Huh. Now it is saying that uh, cannot import Azure Cree credentials. Sorry, my mistake. The name of the car class is without a S. So that was just a spelling mistake from my end. After correcting that spelling mistake, Okay, fine. So no issue in this first line of code. Now there is an issue in this line of code. Okay. So from Azure folder, there is another folder called AI. From that folder, we want to get this file called text analytics. From that file, we have this class. Fine. So what I'll do is I'll install this entire folder only. So let me go ahead and let me install this entire folder. Okay. Uh... Why does say could not find? Okay, your. Can I get this file at least? Can I get the file at least? Let me check. Okay, at least I'm able to get the file. Fine, that entire folder also we can get using another way, and I'll have to do some changes in my uh, pick configuration if it is not able to find the version, not an issue. Okay. Uh, but, but fine, I just wanted this one file, at least that one file I'm able to get. Uh, now we'll just go ahead and try to run our code. And over here, uh, just the spelling mistake will correct. Okay, name of the class is without a S. Ah, fine. And at least we are able to read the reviews inside each of the files. Now what I want to do is I want to do some analysis. So the first analysis that I will do is I'll try to detect the languages. OK, so here what I will do is I will just say to Azure that OK, you have been given the configurations. Now using those configurations, go to the resource. Sorry, go to the uh, sorry, using those configurations using. OK, uh, uh, go to the resource and then ask the resource to detect the language inside of my document. OK, so let's go ahead and let's do it. So we'll say detect the language that of the text that I'm passing to you over here. All right, let's go ahead and let's print it. Let's see what happens. Let's see what response it is giving. We'll just go ahead and check. OK, for every review, it is giving a response. So for example, for the first review, this is the response. Here I'm getting value in the form of a list. You can see at the end, I have square bracket at the start, I have square bracket. In this list, I have one element. In order to get the first element of the list, I'll use index zero. So what I will do over here is I will say, give me the value at index zero. With that, those square brackets will now vanish. Okay, let me run the code again. Those square brackets will now vanish. And that's exactly what we see. Those square brackets are, are now nowhere to be seen. Now we are go, uh, with this. We have got the dictionary inside of that list. 
uh, what I want to do is I want to get the detected language information. This is inside this second value. In order to get this second value, I have to use this second key called primary language. So let me just go ahead and let me mention that key called primary language. OK. Fine with this, I'll get this particular value over here. Let us go ahead. Let us run our code. And with this, you can say I'm getting that particular value. Now what I want is I want to check what is what was the detected language over here. That detected language will be available inside the first value. In order to get this first value of the dictionary, I have to use the first key of the dictionary. Here the first key is called NAME. So let me mention that key NAME. That uh, to that key, whatever value is associated, give me that value. Okay, and that value will give me the detected language of this review. Okay, so for example, for this review, det detected language is French. So it tells me French. For the previous review, the detected language was English. So it gave me English and so on. Okay, so I'll just mention over here that this is your detected language. Language detected is this. Okay, I'll run the code. Now this will give the output in a much more readable manner. Fine, so it says language detected of this last review is French. Language detected of second last review is English and so on. Okay, we can even print this in a new line. All right. Fine, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see what to do next. So our first answer is done. We have uh, detected the language. Now what I want to do is I want to detect the sentiment also. So how to do it? Let's see. So I'll tell my code to detect the sentiment in this review. That whether the review uh, is written is a positive review or a negative review or a mixed review. What is the sentiment? So I want to go ahead and analyze the same. OK, so detect the sentiment in this text that we are reading from the file. Fine, it will read it and. Give us a response. Let's print that response. Let's see. We'll just go ahead and run our code. To get the response. OK, here I have an error in my code. Uh, let's go ahead and let's try to solve that error. The error is uh, there's a spelling mistake. Instead of uh, SE, I should write ZE. That will work. Huh. That is the correct spelling. Now our code will work. We'll get the response. Fine. So for example, after detecting the language, it is trying to detect the sentiment. Right. Uh, and where it has given a whole list. Uh, I want to get the first element from that list. So I will use this index zero. OK, so what will we do? We'll use this index over here zero. And with that, those square brackets will now vanish. And you will see now that square brackets will vanish. OK, square brackets vanishes. And now uh, as far as sentiment is concerned, I'm getting a dictionary value inside of it. What I want to do is I want to focus on this second value, which tells me whether the review was positive, negative, or something else. This second value can be accessed using this second key called S E N T I M E N T. So let me go ahead and let me mention that. Okay. I will say that give get that second value using this second key called S E N T I M E N T. OK, I'll just go ahead and run our code. And let's see the sentiment. So for example, for this last review, the sentiment was positive. For the second last review, the sentiment was mixed and so on. Let me print this out to the user in a much more readable manner. So I'll say sentiment of review is. OK, whatever it is, I'll just print it to the user. OK, fine. Let's go ahead. Let's run our code one last time. And with this, we'll also be able to get the sentiment. 
Okay, for example, for the last review, the sentiment was positive. For the second last review, the sentiment was mixed. For the third last review also, the sentiment was mixed. For the fourth last review, the sentiment was negative. Let's confirm the same. The review says this is a old hotel and the room for furnishings are average, becoming a bit old. The internet doesn't work here, so it's a negative review, right? And that's exactly what our AI service has detected over here. Fine. Uh, after understanding sentiment, you can also do more analysis. You can do entity recognition, lot of things. Let's do entity recognition over here. OK, so what will we do? What we'll do is uh, we'll just go ahead. And tell our code to recognize the entities. So we'll say recognize the entities by entities. I mean any person building place that is mentioned in the review that we want to get. OK. So here what I will do is again, I'll just go ahead and pass our text. And once we pass our text, let's see what happens. The response, I want to print it. Let's see. Okay, so after sentiment, uh, we're trying to uh, recognize the entities mentioned over here. And I'm getting the response in the form of a list. Uh, let me get the first value from that list using index zero. With that, those square brackets will now vanish and I'll get the value inside of the list. And you will see now in the response, those square brackets have vanished I'm, and I'm getting the value inside of the list, which turns out to be dictionary. Uh, here, what I want to do is I want to see the entities. The information of those entities is mentioned over here. From here uh, up till up till up till which value up till I guess over here. Yes, so there are a lot of entities. For example, the first entity is hotel, right? The category of that entity is location. Second entity is again a hotel Buckingham category of it is location. Third entity is uh, this name that is mentioned. Category is location, subcategory is city. So this might be London in French language. OK, maybe it's such a word is mentioned in the review. Then again, next entity is UK category, location, subcategory is country, right? Fine. And uh, next is hotel category, location. There's no subcategory to this that is detected and so on. Like this, all the entities are uh, detected so whatever entity by entity I mean person uh, location place building any such entities any names that you mentioned over there that will be recognized over here so what I want to do is I want to get these entities uh, in order to get it in order to get this particular value from here to here this is my second value instead of the dictionary in, in order to get this second value I'll have to use this second key called entities. So let me go ahead and let me mention this second key. OK, and I'll get a lot of entities over here, as you can see. Just in the last review itself, I had a lot of entities. OK, even in the second last review, I'll get some entities. Similarly, in all the reviews, I'll get some entities. What I want to do over here is since there are a lot of entities, uh, let's go ahead and let's save it in a variable and then I'll try to run a loop. Let me go ahead and let me first save this in a variable. I have a lot of entities and I'll try to run a loop uh, to print those entities one by one. Let's see. So I'll say for a single entity. In this entire list that I'm getting, please go ahead and print the single entity for us. OK, so let's say print the single entity from that single entity. What I want, I want the text of that entity and the category of that entity, right? These two things. So I'll just say print the text of that entity. And uh, then. Put this arrow symbol over here. And after the arrow symbol. Also print the 
category of that entity you can put other things also the confidence score and so on so confidence score for example here gives you idea of uh, how much confident the uh, ai service is uh, in giving its answer okay so here it is conf uh, uh, here it is 87% confident for the next entity it is 73% confident and so on right confidence score will always be between 0 to 1 in order to convert it to percentage terms you can just multiply it by 100 okay fine what i want to see is i want to see the text of the entity and the category of that entity let me go ahead and let me get it okay and i'll just give a heading at the top that now i'm going to print some of the entities that let me just give a heading to the user that this answer is of entity recognition entity recognition okay fine we'll just do this simple change and that's probably it um, i hope there are no syntax issues or so on i don't see any uh, okay what could be the problem oh my mistake over here uh, this print function should not be called because i want to save it in a variable okay fine i've corrected that mistake and now let's go ahead let's run our code and we'll be able to get the entities as well for example for the last review you can see we had hotel entity category was location then next entity was buckingham palace category was location and so on like that many entities we are getting for the last review similarly for the second last review you can see the different entities over here okay you can see different entities similarly in all the reviews you will see different entities okay this is the third last review and so on so for every review we have mentioned the entities so here we have done three basic analysis first analysis was to detect language second analysis was to detect sentiment third analysis was to detect the entities like this you can do a lot of analysis on your text uh, with this uh, we have completed our third lab as well our third lab was to do some basic analysis on text and we have done the same okay so guys our first lab today was to understand how you can convert speech from one language to another our second lab today was uh, to basically convert text from one language to another and our third lab was to analyze text what i will do is i'll just go ahead give you the code in the chat okay so guys uh, did the third lab make sense everyone up till now we have done three labs is it making sense guys shrikant anjali parda manoj yes parda okay fine yes varsh okay okay fine so now moving on to the last part of our webinar uh, which is to uh, show you how you can learn about ai 900 certification so guys uh, you will see official labs for ai 900 let me just go ahead and let me show you the same all you have to do is search for microsoft learning dot github dot co okay dot github dot io put this put colon and then mention any uh, topic on azure for which you want labs let's say i want labs for ai 900 so i'll just write ai 900 okay and with this what will happen is uh, you will see a link for microsoft learning.github.io with this if you open it up i'll just open it up over here and you can see the all the labs that are there inside the curriculum of ai 900 here we did some of the labs okay so text analytics was one then explore speech was one here we converted speech from one language to another then we converted text from one language to another so out of the different labs three labs are already done in this webinar like that there are more labs okay so for example if you go to this section called explore speech 
here it will tell you that okay in order to use the resource of this service get the code from github so it will first ask you to clone the github repo and yes here it is asking you to clone the github repo there you will have code for you know running this speech resource here guys uh, though there's one change here what they have done is they have inserted a hard coded text and that text they are converting it to different different language they are converting it to french english spanish and so on what we did was we did not have hard coded text our text was obtained through my speech right i spoke something using my microphone then using that microphone whatever we spoke was converted to text that text was later converted to french hindi or spanish but here a simple thing is done they have not they are not asking the user to speak something instead they have put a hard coded text over here so here the code is slightly less complex what we did was little advanced than what has shown to you over here fine so you can just run the code just two things you will have to change as it's mentioned over here the key and the region right in which your resources fine apart from that rest of the things you will keep the same and uh, see these labs are there step by step information is there Uh, so in order to practice the labs you can just go ahead go to this link i'll just go ahead and share the link with you in the chat let me share the link over here ha huh. over here one student has a uh, error uh, so pardha for that what you have to do is just run this code if you remember we also ran that particular code just to show that to you okay if you remember we ran this particular code pip install azure dot core that same code you have to run over here i'll just give the code to you in the chat you can run it okay fine so talking about the labs uh, i have given the link of uh, the labs to you guys right uh, so you can just practice the labs okay if you have any doubt or practicing i'll be there available on linkedin okay if at all you have facing some issues or whatever whenever i'll be free from my sessions i'll be able to guide you okay uh, so these are the labs talking about uh, how to schedule or examination so guys uh, if you want to practice labs you can do it over here uh, for theory okay uh, i'll just show you how to learn for theory as well okay so in order to learn uh, theory all you have to do is go to this link and uh, you will see some courses that will help you to learn the theory okay so you can see there are some courses over here that you can access for free and learn the theory if you want to fine uh i will just share the link of the same with you so for labs i have given the link for theory also i have given the i am giving the link right now let me give it to you okay talking about how you can schedule right some of the students had a doubt earlier how to schedule they were mentioning it to our team in the call uh, so just to give you a brief of how you can schedule uh, all you have to do is click on this button called schedule exam okay so i'll go ahead and click on this button over here and after that i will show you what to do next uh you see over here uh, the original cost is around 100 dollars however you can get the uh, a coupon from us and with that you will get uh, a lot of discount okay so you won't have to pay full 100 dollars i think uh, more than half of the amount will be discounted if you use our coupons uh to talk uh, to inquire about our coupons you can reach out to the team from where you have got this webinar link okay fine so uh talking about how you can schedule uh, your guys since i have already given the examination of azure any examination you give for azure uh, if uh, at that time it will ask you to fill your details and i have already done that okay uh, your i have already filled my details i have already filled my name and everything um but if you are appearing for ex azure examination for the first time uh it will give you a form where you have to fill in all these details okay it says that i have already given a azure examination 
uh, in that case my details are already remembered fine uh, after that i'll click on next okay here uh, you can go ahead and mention your uh, discount coupon code as i mentioned uh, you can avail coupon code as well here guys since i'm a microsoft certified trainer so for me by default 75% is off on any examination okay because i'm a microsoft certified trainer uh, but you guys as students you can also avail discounts from us by getting those coupons you can inquire the team for the same okay uh, so all you have to do is uh, um, mention the coupon code where to mention here you do not see it here you will see the discounts that your uh, email id is eligible for okay but what if you want to insert a coupon code or something like that way to do it i'll click on next button okay i'll, yeah, I'll say yes skip i don't want discounts okay fine it says if you have a voucher code coupon code then click on continue and in the next page you will be able to enter the code fine let's do that Okay, and here, uh, guys, you can choose where you want to take the exam, whether you want to take it in a test center or whether you want to do it in your home only. Okay, uh, for you guys, I would not prefer this option. Forget this option for now. Uh, just remember two options. Okay, either you can uh, give the exam in a test center, so there are dedicated test centers uh, where you have to go and you know give your exam. However, you can also give the exam in, in your home and this is the one that I would advise you to select. So let's say you want to give it uh, at your home online. So you can select that option. Then uh, it will ask you to, you know, check the required uh, uh, prerequisites before scheduling this examination that it will first ask you to check is your computer able to handle the examination or not. So it will need some basic things like webcam, good internet connection, right? So you just need those things. Fine. Uh, I guess all of the all of us have those basic requirements in our laptop. I will click on next button. Fine. Then the language for examination will choose English. You can choose any other language also. OK, you can choose the language of our choice. Here I've chosen English. OK, after that you will see a uh, price for this examination. OK, and uh, in order to enter discounts, I should see in some next page maybe. Huh, it says Microsoft policy does not allow a previously passed the exam to be taken again. OK, so it says that I've already passed the exam and that's why it is not allowing me. But fine, in your case, uh, you will be able to go to the next. Uh, you will be able to click on the next button and uh, then you will be able to see uh, you will be able to schedule our examination. So a uh, screen will uh, open up where uh, you can choose the date and time for your exam. At that time below uh, in the same page, probably uh, you will see a field for discount coupon code also there. You can mention your coupon code, right? Just how we mentioned coupon code for Zomato on Zomato app or Swiggy app in the same way here you have to do the same. OK, in my case, it does not allow me to proceed ahead as I've already passed the exam, but in your case, it will allow you to proceed ahead. OK, fine. So this was about how you can schedule or examination. So talking about labs, I have given the link of the labs. Uh, also for theory of this exam, I have given the link of the same as well. OK, so out of the multiple labs that were shown, how many labs have we done today, guys? How many labs have we done today? Three, right? We have already done three labs. So out of the official labs of AI 100, we have already completed three. OK, fine. Uh, talking about validity, I will show you about validity. So I'll just go to my profile learn.microsoft.com. I'll go to my profile. Check my achievements. Uh, I guess it will. My certifications will be in transcript if I'm not wrong. Huh. 
so for example your ai fundamentals you can see it doesn't expire okay i got it last year and you can see there is no expiry date for the same okay so there is no expiry date uh, different certifications have different requirements for example this dp203 certification uh, has a expiry date okay there are different different certifications of different um, policies however ai nandit certification does not have a expiry date so guys any certification that ends with the code 900 you can be rest assured that it won't have any expiry date whether it's ai 900 or dp 900 or az 900 these are fundamental level certifications right they are not associate le associate level certifications they are fundamental level very basic certification for those you do not have a expiry date AI is a, is it hundred does have okay let me check in my scenario do I have uh, I did a time AZ nine hundred okay have they introduced a limit in AZ nine hundred also okay maybe they introduced then it has expired in my scenario fine I do not see it okay I guess I have attempted it using a different ID yes I remember using a different ID let me check over there let me confirm. because when i attempted at that time there was no uh, expiry okay let me check let me sign in using a different id using that id i attempted that exam let me check az900 right uh, so let me go to a profile let me go to a certifications okay it just shows modules completed uh here i am not able to see my okay maybe with this id i did not do any certification do az900 i did do with some other certification sorry with other id let me check was it with this id or someone else although i can get that information directly on linkedin also because on linkedin i would have a uh, uh, you know updated my certifications so let me check on linkedin Okay, I don't want to check over here. I want to check in this browser because here my details are saved already. I don't need to sign in. Okay, let me check. Is it hundred? Have I updated it on LinkedIn or not? I don't remember. Azure fundamentals. So credential. uh do i have a expiry let me check mm see i attempted it last uh, year and i don't think i can okay over here i cannot see any expiry though this was okay you can see az900 uh I don't see any expiry date as such. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Expiries are only be able to see on my profile, right? Okay. Maybe if they have introduced, I'm not aware. But at least to answer it out in AI hundred, you do not see any expiry. AZ hundred in my time there was no expiry. Though I'm just checking why am I not able to see it over here. i can see uh, dp900 i cannot see az900 maybe i attempted it with a different id okay because uh, yeah there are some certification that i attempted with a different id i am not able to recall it from which id did i attempt but fine is there on my linkedin but there i am not able to see the expiry if at all there is expiry of az900 but fine of az900 there is no expiry we just confirmed it all right so uh with this we have completed our main goal for today okay uh guys any other doubts that you have with respect to ai 900 any other doubts uh do harsh uh, please cross check if uh, az 900 has expiry or not at my time we didn't have 
just check if you can upload a screenshot if possible so maybe students doubt will be cleared though it is that i am not able to see in which account from which account did i attempt is a 900 uh i'm not able to see that expiry okay can you tell how to prepare sanjeev there are only two ways in which you have to prepare first is prepare for the labs i would first suggest you go through the labs okay uh, in those labs step by step information is mentioned after that learn the theory okay because when you are learning the labs at that time most of the theory anyways you will learn uh, on the go but still in order to brush up your theory Uh, i've given the link of both the things your lab as well as your theory and last thing what i would suggest you is uh, if possible go through some of the previous uh, ai and unrelated exams that have been conducted in short basically i'm asking you to go through the dumps just so that you are more confident on these things okay uh, i have the dumps with me so in case you want to connect with me on linkedin or anything you can get it from me or online also it's readily available so you can get it from there as well so only three things are needed uh sanjeev first is labs i have given the link of the same second theory i have given link of theory as well and third and last thing is dumps okay uh you can connect with me on linkedin i'll just find it i might have it somewhere inside of my google drive and uh, i'll share it share it with you over linkedin okay so just three things third thing is not necessary however i would recommend you if uh, since you are a beginner uh, in this ai field i would suggest you to go through it up so that just so that you are more confident that's all if we don't have python knowledge then what will we do uh, okay so umesh uh, when you will attempt the exam uh, you will get a prompt from the exam uh, website it will ask you whether Uh, you are uh, proficient in c sharp or python because you will get some questions that are written in either of the two languages so if you say that you are proficient in c sharp you will get the same questions in c sharp if you say you are proficient in python you will get the same questions in python but the questions of ai and 100 will only revolve around c sharp or python okay any coding related questions for example it might say that okay this code does what okay so um there are only two options c sharp or python you have to learn either of the two okay if you don't know either of the two uh, make sure that you learn it before the exam okay if you don't have knowledge make sure that before the exam you learn about any one out of these two languages i would suggest python as it will be more simpler to learn as compared to c sharp okay um and it's very easy learning python if you spend just 2 to 3 days uh, you will be able to get average level of understanding and that average level of understanding is enough okay in order to understand the code uh rahul we can't share on mail or over here um uh, officially i am not allowed it's just that if you want it i can personally send it to you but we can't send on official channels okay so neither on mail neither over here okay fine any other doubts guys okay i guess abhishek has posted something abhishek says ha huh, fundamental certification do not have expiry yes and then he has highlighted role based ha huh? so fundamental exactly as predicted that any examination that ends with 900 code should not have any expiry fine so uh, ai 900 does not have expiry and we can see over your uh, dp 900 does not also have any expiry okay uh, similarly az 900 will also not have expiry at least in my time there was no expiry okay but once when was saying there is expiry so acha after june 30th june they have changed the policy maybe okay fine not sure about is it right but maybe if you are saying it could be the case but fine at least for an 100 there is no expiry so we are, we are fine on that okay fine if there are any other doubts you can let me know guys 
or we are done for today. Okay, so uh, Archie, uh, we are done with the course content, so you can take over. Okay, Harsh says, will there be negative marking? Uh, no, not at all. There is no negative marking. Okay, there is no negative marking. So make sure to attempt all the questions, guys. No negative marking whatsoever. You, uh, as you might know, the exam will be of thousand marks. You have to score at least seven hundred to pass. Okay, and it's not like every question will have the same weightage. Some questions will have a weightage of forty marks. Some questions will have a weightage of twenty marks. What weightage is there for the questions that you won't know? So attempt each question, assuming that each question is important. There is no negative marking. So make sure that you attempt all the questions. Yes, thank you so much, Abhishek. Arsh says, if I fail in the first attempt, you can attempt it as many times, Arsh. You can attempt it as many times. Yes, yes. You can attempt it as many times as you want. You can attempt it 10 times, 20 times, as many times as you want. Will this certification help to get new roles? Sanjeev, this is a very fundamental certification. So uh, expecting job out of this uh, would not be right. Even if you do associate level certification, let's say you do AI 102, right? Or um, any other associate level certification in AI. Even that, just by getting the certification, um, you won't get a job. So first you will have to prove yourself that fine. Getting certification is just one thing that, okay, you know. But you need uh, project experience on the same also. Okay. So whether you build your own projects or whether you have done your projects in your company, that will help you. But uh, if you are, if someone asks, let's say, just by getting the certificate, whether it is AI 900, which is a very fundamental certificate, but even if you do associate certificate like AI 102, even then, is this that by getting the certificate, you won't get a job? Okay, because anyone can get the certificate nowadays. See, if I just share the dumps with you, na, anybody can uh, memorize the question and answers and attempt the certification and pass. So just by getting the certification, uh, you won't get any offer in the company. However, uh, let's say there are two people, right? You have the certification with you. Let's say second person does not have it. And both of you are freshers in this field then I would uh, trust a person who has this certification more as compared to the person who does not have it, okay? So this is just the symbol that, okay, you have passed this examination, but companies know nowadays how people pass their examination using dumps and all, right? You won't get any. So expecting job out of this certification is not right. Okay, is there any article, ar architect level exam which, which we can get the MCT? Uh, yes, so Rahul, what I did was uh, I attempted DP203 certification and with that I got my MCT credential. Okay. So with DP203, I got my MCT credential. I don't remember it was DP. Huh, it was DP203 only, yes. Okay, so at that time, when I got my MCT credential, DP203 was enough for me. However, I have heard that nowadays the policies have changed. Okay, uh, even at my times, the policy was completely new, but now I have heard that they have scrapped that policy. So you'll have to connect to any uh, Microsoft partnered, you know, institute to know the new uh, policy for getting MCT. Or you will get that information online as well, but I'm not aware with the latest policy at my time with DP203. Uh, I attempted DP203 certification and my time there was another exam that I had to give for MCT. So there was another MCQ exam that I had to give. Uh, so at that time, Microsoft had partnered with some company. I don't remember the name, but uh, in that company, I had to attempt a MCQ exam. Okay, it basically asked questions about how do you, how would you train these students in this scenario? Let's say there is an internet issue in your home and you are delivering the class in your home, then what would you do in that scenario and so on. So in my time, I had to attempt DP203 uh, exam as well as this separate MCQ exam of a different company. 
However, I've heard that that policy has been scrapped. So you will have to see the new policy. Which type of job profile? Again, don't uh, uh, see. These are fundamental certifications. Even if you get a to associate level certification, uh, you might try for AI engineer. However, there's a different requirement altogether. See here in these certifications, they are just uh, most of, I mean, mostly you will be working around how to use the models that are there in Azure, the pre-built models that are there in Azure. But to get a role, you need to understand how to build your own AI models. Up till now, you have not seen how to build your own AI models. In order to get a job, you first need to learn how to build your own AI models. In AI, there are two fields, machine learning and deep learning. So you need to know how to build your own machine learning models. You need to know how to build your own deep learning models. Once you know how to build your own models, then you can expect a job. But here, these certifications will be talking about, mostly talking about how to use pre-built models in Azure. For example, in order to uh, translate speech, did we build our own model? No, Azure automatic uh, pre-built. I mean, there was a pre-built model in Azure. We just used it. We just used that model. We didn't build that model, right? So to expect a job, you need to learn how to build that model in AI. In AI, there are two fields, machine learning, deep learning. So I would suggest you, Harsh, to learn how to build your own machine learning models, how to build your own deep learning models, okay? Then, uh, but you can expect a role. But uh, just by attempting these AI certifications on Azure, you would not get any role, okay? Because these certifications talk about how to use pre-built models in Azure. Whereas you, if you want to expect a role, you need to learn how to build your own models, okay? Any other uh, doubts, guys, you can let me know. I hope, Harsh, I uh, catered to your doubt. If not, let me know. Yes, okay. Fine. All right. So uh, I'll just hand it over to Archie. One second. I'll just let call Archie and she will conclude the session. So just wait for a few seconds. Okay, guys, so Archie will just come and conclude the session. One second, I guess I received a message. Uh, yes, thank you, Swapnil. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, LinkedIn, yes, I'll share my LinkedIn. You can just search for uh, Smith Shah Synergetics and you should find my LinkedIn. Okay, just search for Smith Shah Synergetics and you will be able to find my LinkedIn over here. Yes, thank you, Sanjeev. All right, thanks for attending, everyone. It was great to be with you guys. If there are any doubts, you can always contact us on our email IDs, okay? If you want to contact with me personally, you can contact with me on LinkedIn as well. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much, and bye. Bye, everyone. Uh, thank you, sir, for the session. Guys, I already shared feedback form. Please fill this feedback form before leaving the session.